Today, we're comparing multiple in-reach devices by Garmin, the Messenger, the Mini 2, and the 67i. That's next. I've always take a satellite communicator out in the backcountry on my trips. You never know when you're needed, so it's good to have it. Now, I've been immersed in the Garmin system, and I have their watch. I also have their computer for the bikes as well. So sticking with Garmin for a communication device was definitely a no-brainer for me. Garmin offers a few different devices that all have in-reach capability. There are three which are actually great for the backcountry. The Messenger, the Mini 2, and the 67i. There's also a Mont Montana 700i that has inReach and has a big touchscreen, but it's a bit more for mounting in a Jeep. It's bulky, has horrible battery life, so you need to plug it in as well. It's not really great for taking in the back country. So these three devices are the best possibilities for inReach capabilities out in the back country. They have similarities as well as different features and specs, so let's check those out in a bit more detail. First, let's talk about the similarity between each of these units. Each of them are IPX7 waterproof rating. They all have in-reach satellite communication capabilities. They all use the Iridium satellite network as well. They have multi-band GPS and multi-GNSS reception as well, so you have improved connectivity than earlier in-reach model. They can all be paired with the Garmin Messenger app to be able to provide seamless communication to your family and friends. All three of these can get weather reports. They can also send and receive messages they share location on a map on the map share and they can also leave breadcrumbs for the trackback feature if you do get lost. Each one of these can be used as a standalone communication device if your phone battery happens to die. Some are easier to use than others in that regard and we'll go over that soon. All three of these are chargeable by USB type C and they all need a subscription to be able to use the in-reach communication features. Now let's consider the differences between these three units starting with the price. The price of the messenger costs 300, the Mini 2 costs 400, and the 67i costs 599. Considering the appearance of these three units, they're all slightly different in appearance. Starting with the Messenger here, you can see the new Messenger is mainly just like this square feature. It has a very small screen here in the front. Also in the front, you have two arrow selection things to scroll through your menus and an OK button as well for your selections. On the side here, you have an in-reach SOS cap here for your SOS button that you put push in emergencies. And then you also have here a power button too to go ahead and power on your device. On the other side here, you have a cover that has your USB type C access port as well. Looking at the Mini 2, it is very similar design to the original Mini, so quite familiar as well. You have your antenna, you have your two selection buttons on the side here. You have your screen here, which is very handy as well. Your OK button, a back button, and then you have your SOS cover right here as well to go ahead and push your emergency emergency button. You also have these little clips here that you can go ahead and attach a lanyard connection to the corner if needed. And you have some other connection spots in the back here. You can go ahead and attach a carabiner as well. If you do want to see the differences between the original Mini and the Mini 2, you can go ahead and click the link here. Looking at the new 67i here, it has the same kind of features as the 66. And uh, this is a classic GPS unit. And you have your USB charger here here on the back here. You also have this light here, so an extra little feature there. If you do need a light, it's there for emergencies. On the side over here, you have your SOS inReach emergency button cap, and so you can go ahead and push the button in those emergencies that you need. And then all your other selection buttons that you have, and you can see there are many, are right here in the front. Looking at the screen, the screen is this very nice color screen, a lot bigger screen than the other inReach devices here. And the nice thing about this is you have these buttons here that you can select uh, very easily going through the menus as you would like. And it's not a touch screen, which is nice, because if it does get wet, it'll be inoperable. So you have these buttons, you can go ahead and select your menus and everything. You have your arrow direction keys, your enter, and uh, you have so many more features with this as well. Now, as you can tell, it is a little bit bulkier and we'll talk a little bit about that. On the top here, you do have your antenna. You also have your power button here. Let's consider the weight of these three units. The messenger is gonna come in at four ounces. The mini two is 3.5 ounces 
and then the 67i is 8.1 ounces or that's 230 grams so the mini 2 is going to be the lightest option now there are pros and cons to that overall and we'll go over that in a bit more detail let's talk about the screen starting with the messenger as you can see this is the smallest screen it is a 1.08 diagonal inch screen there so it's pretty small out of these three units it is enough so you can select your menus and letters as needed but it's going to be a little bit harder to see you have a pixel resolution of 160 by 68 pixels looking at the mini 2 here you have a 1.27 inch diagonal screen so a little bit bigger it also has higher resolution it's 176 by 176 pixels so it's going to be able to to see a whole lot easier especially in those bright sunny conditions the screen of the 67i is really nice it's a three inch diagonal screen and uh, the pixel resolution is 240 by 400 pixels so high definition kind of screen compared to these other units here it's colored as well and you can adjust the brightness as needed also so a whole lot more flexibility so the 67i is going to have the much better screen compared to these three and that's no surprise there let's talk about the antennas as you can see they all are slightly different in their antennas antennas here. The messenger here is actually a completely different antenna. It uses a patch antenna, which is a square on top. It needs to be facing up for the most part for it to work. So it's really good if you put it on a dash or something in the car. Uh, it has a transmit power of 3.9 watts, which is actually the highest transmit power out of these three units. And that comes in at faster speeds for messages sending and receiving. The Mini 2 has this Helix antenna, which is what they've used on the Mini as well. And this is a transmit power though of 1.51 watts. So that means it's gonna be the slowest out of the three for receiving and sending messages. Looking at the 67i, it also has a Helix antenna. Now the transmit power of this antenna is higher than the Mini 2, coming in at 2.24 watts. So better transmit power overall, which is going to translate in terms of speed of sending and receiving messages better than the Mini 2, but slightly less than the Messenger. These speeds will also depend on the conditions, whether you have open skies or you're more under tree cover. Let's consider the satellite connectivity. Now, a typical rule of thumb is the more satellite constellation options you can connect to, the more accurate your location will be. The Messenger connects to GPS, Galileo, and QZSS, but it can also connect to Beto, which is a Chinese satellite constellation. So a little bit extra options that you have with the messenger. Now the Mini 2 on the other hand only connects to GPS, a Galileo and QZSS. So you don't have the Beto for the Mini 2. Now, when you look at the 67i, it can connect to GPS, a Galileo, QZSS, Beto, and also IRNSS. So in terms of accuracy, the 67i is going to be the most accurate because it can connect to more satellite constellation options. Let's talk about the interface on the device. Looking at the messenger here, it's a very basic. You just have your selection arrows here. You can select messages, your tracking, your weather, you can do track back, which is actually a breadcrumb that it leaves. So there's not any true tracking on here. It only leaves a breadcrumb. You have your in-reach service where you can change your plans as well. You also have your settings there. So a lot of things that you can do from here, but uh, it's a very simple and easy to use. Whatever you want, you just select OK and you have it. The Mini 2 interface got an upgrade from the original Mini. It's faster and easier to use. It has more of a watch-like feature here. So you can select through your menus like this very easily. And uh, whatever you want, you just select it with your OK button and you're able to go. So you can do tracking, you can do navigation, you can select weather, you can check your messages, you can send or receive messages and a whole lot of other features that this has. So pretty cool, but it's also simple. Now looking at the interface of the 67i, it's a little bit more uh, beefed up. You can see it's almost like you have all these different apps that you can select from. You have a whole lot more options Options. It's a little bit more complex, but once you get used to it, it's really easy to use. Let's talk about the navigation features of these three units. The Messenger really doesn't have any true navigation. It's typically what its name says. It's a messaging device. It does have track back, which means it leaves a breadcrumb. So if you do happen to get lost, hit track back and it'll take you back the way you came. Other than that, uh, there really isn't much navigation to it. 
Uh, you do have tracking where someone can see you on MapShare, but you personally cannot see where you are and you cannot use it to track. You can't use it to connect to uh, the Garmin Explorer app and see yourself on a map either. It's only good for that messaging app. Now the Mini 2 has a little bit more options for navigation. For the navigation, uh, you are able to connect it first of all to your phone and use the Garmin Explorer app and there you have a whole lot of features. You have maps and everything you can use, but if you're using it as just a standalone navigational device, you're able to load waypoints as well as routes to this device and the screen can help you navigate as you see it. It will give you point to point navigation. It shows you the trail, but it doesn't show you any of the terrain. It doesn't have topography maps or satellite maps or anything on this. It's just a black screen that has an arrow and shows you the trail. It does have a audio alert. So if you do happen to go off trail, it'll alert you to get back on trail. It also has trackback feature, which you can follow your breadcrumbs similar to the Garmin Messenger. So a bit more functionality overall with the Mini 2 as far as navigational features. Now the 67i is gonna win hands down when it comes to navigation features for the device. Now it can connect to the Garmin Explorer app by Bluetooth and you can use maps and stuff with your phone. But if you're using it as a navigational tool for just a standalone unit on your GPS, this really is what you want. And so you have your map feature here. You can go ahead and show your maps and everything where you are. It'll pull up trails, it'll pull up satellite imagery as well. You can load different maps from topography to satellites and you can import waypoints as well. You can have uh, different trails show up and it's just gonna give you a whole lot more options. You can zoom in, zoom out. And overall, this is a true navigational device that's nice to have a built-in inReach messaging unit as well. Now let's talk about the messaging experience using these units. Now, like I said, all three of these can be paired with the Garmin Messenger app, and that's really how the Messenger is meant to be used. Uh, it can receive messages really fast based on that higher uh, wattage output for that antenna there. And so you can receive messages really quickly and it's real seamless as well. When paired with your phone, you're able to type your messages really nicely, uh, just like you're typing a text message. So very nice there. If you're using it as a standalone device, without your phone, it's gonna be very hard because then you have to select each letter individually and that can become pretty cumbersome and slow. But if you're sitting at an isolation place out in the wilderness and not have anything to do, okay. But it's pretty annoying just using it as a standalone, but it is capable nonetheless. For me personally, if I did have a major emergency, I didn't want to depend on just that screen alone, especially even if my batteries died on my phone. The Mini 2 also can connect to the Messenger app as well and pair with your phone, and that's really how it's best used as well, to type in like a text message. But if you happen to not have your phone or it dies a battery, you can message individually on the Mini 2 as well. But you, like the Messenger, you have to select each letter individually, and again, cumbersome and slow, and in emergency it can be rather annoying and inconvenient so something just to consider now the the antenna is the slowest out of the three so receiving and sending messages will be slower compared to these other two units now for the 67i it can be paired with your phone as well as a messaging device to go ahead and text messages from your phone but let's say your phone dies what are you to do well the garmin 67i is going to be a whole lot easier to use than the messenger and the mini 2 because it has a full keyboard that comes on the screen that you can select your letters individually, but it's a whole lot easier, much faster because you can see the whole screen. So if my life was depending on it, I need to send out a message and I can only use it as a standalone device, uh, I would go with the 67i for sending messages. It does have a moderately powered uh, antenna. It's a little bit slower than the Messenger, a little bit faster than the Mini 2, so something just to consider as well. Let's talk about the battery life of these three units. Now, I will say battery life does depend based on where you are. Whether you have open skies or tree cover, the battery life will vary. Looking at the Messenger here, the battery life, if you do have full sky available, Garmin says this will go up to 28 days, and then if you have moderate tree cover, it'll go up to 14 days. So messaging location set to receive every every 10 minutes or so. So this has about double the battery life of the Mini 2. So pretty big upgrade if you're looking at battery life. Now the Mini 2 with a full sky can last up to 14 days. If you have a moderate tree cover, it'll last up to seven days. 
sending a message and location every 10 minutes or so. The 67i for battery mode, remember, has to power a screen, has to power a whole lot of other features in there than just the Enreads messaging device. But in normal mode, it's gonna have 180 hours of battery life, which is pretty good considering how much features this thing has to power. So you have a backlit colored screen, you have an antimeter, you also have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, all these different things can affect battery life, but you can adjust them and prolong battery life based on your needs and desires there. However, if you do want it to last, you can actually put it in expedition mode with the inReach still enabled. And when you do that, it will last 425 hours, which is 17 days, so longer than the Mini 2, which is pretty cool. Now, if you go into full expedition mode where you turn off the inReach messaging capabilities as well, this will last up to 800 plus hours or around 30 days. So what I do is I have a long backpacking trip and I would use my phone a lot too. So I would put it in expedition mode, treat it just like the mini two. But the nice thing is let's say my phone died. I just take it out of expedition mode and I have a full GPS standalone device with messaging capabilities. That's going to last a whole lot longer than my phone. So depending on what mode you select for the 67i, the 67i can have the longest battery life out of the three units, or it can also have the shortest depending on what mode you choose. Let's talk about the ease of carry and portability of these three units. The messenger is pretty portable. It's light. It's small small, but it's kind of awkward. The square shape needs to be pointed up or sideways. It can't be pointed to the ground. Now there's no clip or anything that you can use this to attach it to your bag. You do have these little uh, slots here. You can attach a lanyard to and it'll hang down and stuff, but you can't really hang it on your backpack or anything like that. Now the Garmin 2 has this little uh, carabiner that you can attach to it very easily and attach it to your backpack strap as well. It will kind of a doggle and bounce around so something just to keep in mind maybe put a rubber band or something to strap it down a little bit better as well now if you do want to hold it a whole lot more firmer Garmin does make this spline adapter that is very much like their other devices where you have this spline in the back and you can clip it on any of their mounts you have an adapter you can put for the mini 2 as I did here and then you can fit any of their clips very nicely and it clips on and provides some nice sturdiness. So I have one on my backpack strap that this is able to, to hang on very nicely, a whole lot better than having it flip flop with using a carabiner. Now the downside, if you did do that, it does add some substantial weight to the Mini 3. It's about an extra 2.5 ounces that's added if you do add the spline and the clips. So something just to keep in mind. Now compared to the other two units, the 67i is gonna be bigger, bulkier, and a bit heavier, but it's still pretty easy to carry. It has that built-in spline here in the back. So if you did wanna attach the Garmin's clips and stuff, you're able to do that very easily. So that's a nice thing, and it's already factored into the overall weight for this unit. I have one that straps onto my backpack a strap, and I definitely prefer holding it that way. And it's not flip-flopping in the wind by a carabiner or anything like that. So that's very nice, and it's nice and secure for when you move. And you, when you need it, you just grab it and pop it off, look at it, and then put it back on, and you're good to go. Garmin also makes a tether strap system that uses Velcro, but I definitely prefer to use this clip here that I attach to the backpack strap. I'll have the link in the description for that. Now let's talk about some cool additional features that these devices do. Now one thing the Messenger does is it has the capability of charging your phone via reverse charging, kind of like a power bank. And so if your battery dies to your phone, just plug it in via the USB Type-C port there and it will reverse charge your device. And it does so to give your phone a little extra juice if you need it in emergencies. Now this reverse charge only lasts 20 minutes at a time, just enough to give your phone some power for when you really need it. This reverse charge is not available if the battery percentage of the messenger drops below 20% because it wants to preserve the ability to send and receive messages. Now the Mini 2 doesn't have that kind of reverse charging, but what it does have is a compass feature. So you can use it as a compass as you're walking around. It helps you have extra navigational abilities that the Messenger just doesn't have. Now the 67i is gonna be your most feature-rich device. It has a whole lot of other things. In addition to the compass, it has topo maps, satellite maps, barometric, altimeter, point-to-point -point navigation, geocaching, LED beacon flashlight, and picture viewer, and more. So if you're really wanting the, the overall best thing you can get with all the bells and whistles, the 67i is definitely going to be that as far as features. Now let's talk about the future proof of these units here. Now this is something that 
weighed heavily in my consideration when comparing these three units. Now, as you know, I've used the Mini and the Mini 2 for years. It's been reliable, it's lightweight, I use it for all my messaging needs, and I've never had any issues with it. However, I lost it, and when I lost it, I had to get another one, and so I was looking at these three units deciding, do I just wanna get a Mini 2 again, or do I want a Messenger or the 67i? And one of the big factors that came in to my consideration was how future-proof are these? Now, if you know, iPhone came out with their SOS capability for via satellite, so you can message and communicate to emergency people in the backcountry when you don't even have cell phone reception. Apple has really invested a lot into these satellites, and I think in the future, not too far future, maybe a year or two down the road, there will be enough satellites to have a phone that will have connection anywhere else in the world. So it's not too far to think about that. And it's already been proven with Starlink on how you can get internet almost anywhere. And I think the future for cell phones is satellite. And that way you're gonna have a carrier that is run by satellites and you have connection everywhere. There's no roaming. So something just to keep in mind. So for these messaging devices, the Mini 2 and the Messenger, I feel like their time is coming as far as how long they're actually gonna be future proof. I think it's only a few years or so. So considering the investment, I was just weighing that. I need something now, but I want something that's really going to last and I can use in the future. So that's what brought me to the 67i because it's a GPS unit and a messaging unit in one. Yeah, it's a little bit more weight. Yeah, it's a little bit more bulky, but the features that this has, it really helps me consider this investment the wise investment. And the reason I went with this is I plan to do expeditions. I plan to do things that I don't want to do typically just relying on a phone for navigation, such as Rainier, Mount Baker, harsh situations where a phone would very much easily uh, lose battery in cold conditions. Where this is built for the ruggedness, it has really excellent battery life, and it's a whole lot more dependable than depending on a phone. Plus, you have the communication. So even if the satellites come and we have connection anywhere out there, even in the backcountry because of through our cell phones, I want to depend on something that's rugged, dependable, waterproof, and has a long-lasting battery. And right now, none of the iPhones can really do that. So concluding thoughts, which device should you get? Well, that really depends on you and your needs. If you already have a dedicated GPS unit, maybe you have a Garmin watch, maybe you have an own standalone device, well, then just get the Messenger. The Messenger is very handy at sending messages. It doesn't do navigation, doesn't do track tracking and all that stuff, but it messages and it's an excellent reliable thing for SOS communication when you really need it. Plus it has excellent battery life and it's the cheapest option. Now, if you want something with a bit more functionality, a little bit more navigational features, then the Mini 2 is an excellent choice. It's still lightweight, it's easy to use, it's only $100 more than the Messenger, but it's great. So it's a good unit and it's dependable. I use it for years. So if you're a casual backpacker, you're not doing the extreme conditions, uh, you're not going into the tops of mountains like Rainier and need a long lasting uh, navigational unit, then the Mini 2 is going to be an awesome unit. And for most people out there, the Mini 2 is probably gonna be the way to go. But if you want something that has a lot more dependability, that has a lot more navigational features, barometer, altimeter, compass, all those different things, plus maps, satellites, uh, this is great for using a hunting device and see those GMU units and everything like that, private property, public lands. Uh, you're able to do that with the 67i, but you also have the in-reach feature capability to message as well. I think the 67i is the best device Garmin has out there for the inReach devices. So if you want an inReach device that can also give navigation, can go in extreme conditions and doesn't rely on a phone, you can use it as a standalone device, I would go with the 67i. So it's a bit more future-proof than these other devices. So even if those satellites come out and the future is just a few years away from having connectivity anywhere you go, if that's the future, these things will probably be just dead weight and this one will still be functional, use it as great navigation with an emergency backup uh, SOS communication as well. So what did you think of the comparison of these three units? Which one would you go with and why? Leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. If you like what you saw, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe for more backpacking content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.